Holy Spirit, and God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever to the age of all ages. Amen. Today is the second Sunday of the blessed month of Baba, and as we were saying, the theme of this month is what? Last month was the love of God. Okay? This month, the power of God. Our God is the Pantler Torah, the Almighty. Um, last week, we saw um, the Lord who has power over sickness in healing um, the paralyzed man. And today we see him having power over all creation, including us. <clears throat> and uh, in the gospel of today, according to St. Luke chapter 5, we see the Lord um, knowing exactly where all the little fish are. And as some people say, directing the fish to the net of the apostles after he directed the apostles um, where to go. <clears throat> and the Lord, um, uh, after teaching the multitudes and the disciples, he tells Simon and, and the apostles, um, put out from a little from the land. And then he says, uh, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. <clears throat> And as long as we're in the world, God is calling us to go into the deep. Um, and once we leave this world, we are already in the shore of the heavenly kingdom. <clears throat> but this call that he asks Simon Peter to do um, and the, the rest of the disciples, he's calling us also to extend ourselves beyond what we think we are able or outside of our comfort zone. Um, and sometimes the response is, uh, Master, I've told all, all night and I've caught nothing. Um, I'm tired. I'm busy. Um, I need to, to be successful in this area. Um, uh, and uh, sometimes people even complain about this in their spiritual life. Um, in that, uh, I've tried this and that and I've done this for so many uh, years or whatever, and I don't see any fruit or any success. Um, so uh, Simon Peter and many of the disciples had this great obedience that sprung out of their faith, right? He said, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down uh, the, the nets. It's similar to what we were speaking about a couple of weeks ago in terms of the, the simple obedience uh, to the Lord. Um, Simon Peter, as we know, was a great apostle. He, he asked the Lord, and the Lord gave him the ability to walk on water. He had a great faith in the Lord Jesus Christ by saying, um, uh, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And then he says, uh, on this rock of faith, um, in a sense, I will build my church. And we all want to have that strong faith as uh, Simon Peter did. But we can also quickly lose that trust in him when the going gets tough. Uh, I think we said this last year. When was uh, this miracle repeated in the lives of the apostles? After, after the resurrection, the same exact thing um, regarding, well, there's a few details that are intentionally different. Um, we won't go into to that, but who is the first person to recognize that it was the Lord? Because he appeared to them, they didn't, they didn't recognize him as the Lord Jesus Christ um, after the resurrection um, until he revealed himself to them. Uh, so the miracle happened and they still didn't know except who, who was the one who, was it Simon Peter? No, St. John. Right? He said, it is the Lord. He had his spiritual eyes open um, to understand and to reflect and to contemplate and to recognize the Lord. So sometimes we're in our life and we have a struggle and God solves a problem and we're very thankful. And then we forget until we have a similar circumstance happen again. And sometimes we remember, sometimes we don't. Right. So we won't all went to have the same strong faith as Simon Peter. But sometimes we need something else besides faith, right? Um, as we know, so here Simon Peter reminds us of the faith and John the Beloved reminds us of love. 
We need to have this faith working through love in order to have a balanced life or a balanced relationship with God or a, a, a strong um, faith that cannot be moved even during times of tribulation. So um, uh, that kind of reminds me of the same example of the two figures, and I think we've mentioned this before, of a strong faith that works and a strong love that um, that collects all of the um, nectar from the flowers by sitting at the feet of the Lord. Who am I talking about? The two figures? Mary and Martha, the two sisters, right? <clears throat> I'm sure you remember the story, but just a few chapters after this, in the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 10, um, it says a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house, and she had a sister called Mary who sat also at Jesus' feet and heard his word, but Martha was distracted with much serving. This is the, the, the service and the action of Peter, right? Um, as she approached him, said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Um, and Jesus answered and said to him, Martha, Martha, you are worried about and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. So here the Christ is telling all of us we need to have this balance. Some people say, just think about this as, okay, I know many Marthas in my life, and I know many Marys in my life. Which one am I, right? Um, of course, when it, the going gets tough and we need someone to depend on, we depend on the Marthas. And when we want to relax and enjoy ourselves and, and feel good, we depend on the Marys. But um, I think more importantly than this, the main reason why the Lord gave uh, so this illustration is to teach us that we have both a Mary and a Martha in our heart, in our life, right? in, our, in ourselves. And, and we need to keep them balanced, um, whether it comes to our spiritual life or our social life or um, our, our work or academic life. <clears throat> so we need to have the balance of John the Beloved and Simon Peter. Right? If, if we go off kilter too much to one or the other, it will affect our relationship with God. Um, <clears throat> uh, we need one in our heart to love him so much that we can recognize when the Lord is speaking to us. Um, and at the same time, what happened after John the Beloved said, it is the Lord? What did Simon Peter do? You know, just, we didn't read it today. He did some, something very interesting. Um, he put on his, his garment and he dove into the water, even though they were not far away from the shore, and ran to the Lord, or swam to the Lord, right? So this is this is the action and the service of, of, of Simon Peter, right? So John didn't do this. So um, here shows the great balance that each one of us has to have inside. One to work, the other to serve. One to sit and choose the good part. Um, one to recline in his head in the bosom of the the, the Lord, the other to proclaim you are Christ, the Son of the living God. Um, <clears throat> and what happens when we don't have that balance, which oftentimes is hard in, in this life, as even in science, when we say in order to have something balanced, um, there has to be a continual re-evaluation and adjustment, just like the thermostat, for example. Um, we don't just turn on the air condition full blast and that's it. Okay, it's balanced. No. <laughs> Once it gets cold, it has to turn off. Right? And, and vice versa. So same thing in our life, we have to reevaluate how much of our Mary and Martha there is, depending even on the circumstances. In difficult times, probably sometimes, we need to have more of the Martha to do the things that are necessary. And also, we also have to have the Mary to, to request comfort and to hear the grace, the words of grace uh, from the Lord. <clears throat> so if the Martha part takes over too much, we become worried and troubled about many things. So if I am constantly being worried and troubled and, and blaming others, then maybe I need a little bit more of the, the Mary um, to sit at the feet of the Lord and, and to choose the better part, right? Um, <clears throat> so we actually become weaker rather than we think we're stronger because we're taking a lot on ourselves. But we have to give everything to God and know that the strength that we use is from 
from him, not from ourselves. Um, uh, because the excellence of power comes from God and not of us, like St. Paul says in, in the epistle of today. Uh, and vice versa, if, if the merry part takes over too much, we become maybe busybodies in other people's matters, or we take the attitude of enjoying life or putting more um, reliance on others rather than doing things. Um, and we might enjoy being with people and even with God, but we don't give enough time to, to learn and to work and to do and to serve. And so um, this might look like a person who has a lot of knowledge and feeling, um, but doesn't put things into action um, because they think I, I just have to believe and love and but love doesn't need any action. No, that's not true as we know. Um, so if there's no balance, we might go to one extreme or the other and it ends in emptiness, in failure and most likely sin, as St. Augustine says, um, sin is imbalance. Um, so um, one extreme will be like a machine without love and without a heart. The other one, other extreme, will have understanding. It will be unreliable or immature. Um, or people who say, like St. John says, don't just love in, in word and tongue, but indeed in truth. Um, <clears throat> so it's like, for another example, um, it's like the person who only eats and doesn't do anything. Or the people who, versus the person who only works and doesn't eat. Of course, we have to have a balance. Um, and the body tells us immediately if that balance is, is off kilter. Um, so that's why the Lord and the church um, gives us reminders. Um, for example, even in our prayers, right? We have the written prayers and we have the spontaneous prayers that God wants of us. We have to have uh, the balance, even with um, the Sabbath day, right? Or the Sunday nowadays to remind ourselves we put in five or six Martha days. We need one merry day. Um, same thing with um, the tithing. We spend eight or nine dollars on ourselves. We give one um, uh, to the Lord to remember that he's the one who gave us all of the ten. So um, this is needed in order to be successful, to remind ourselves that God rewards those who labor and toil for the sake of the kingdom, but not to go um, to an, an extreme. And when we feel that we're working and we don't have this merry experience, then the Lord will reward, just like he did um, in, in the story of today. They worked all night. He said, okay, just do one more thing, and then I'll show you the reward. So St. Cyril explains this by saying, they let down the net, and immediately it was full of fish, in order that by a visible fact and by a type and representation miracles miraculously enacted, they might be fully convinced that their labor would not be an award. And St. Paul says, know that your labor is not needed in the Lord. Um, so yes, every now and then, if we're being too much of a Martha, and then we say, wait a second, where's God? Then God will say, okay, here's the reward for, for the work of the Martha, but remember, you need to have uh, the merry balance. Um, hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> he says, um, uh, in order for, for this balance to, to be accomplished, we need to constantly have that time to reevaluate and to see, um, am, am I spending? And most of the time, I think we're, we're in the boat of we forget to sit at the feet of the Lord, especially in this day and age. Um, <clears throat> and so this doesn't just have success in our spiritual life, but even with, with our friends and family, right? If, if we're not doing enough for our friends or for our family and we're just there to enjoy and make other people work, that's not, that's not the proper balance. And at the same time, if we're doing everything, but we're forgetting to be with our, our friends and family um, and, and enjoying their company, that's also uh, imbalanced. Um, so it's, it's easier um, said than done to have this uh, proper balance. <clears throat> but the, import, the important point is to recognize it and to work towards it. And God will reveal to us little by little when the balance is uh, good and when it needs to be adjusted. 
and sometimes it needs to be adjusted even within the same day. Um, but as long as we have this um, understanding, then um, God will reward us 30, 60, and 100 fold. <clears throat> Last thing, we'll just uh, talk about um, one contemplation uh, of how, so the question is, where did the Lord want the disciples? Did he want them in the shore or did he want them in the deep um, or both? Actually, he just wanted them in the ship. Um, and, and that's where, the, the, where he was before the miracle occurred. When they toiled all night, Christ was not with them, right? Um, but when Simon willingly accepted him into the boat, this was the throne of Christ at the cross and his pulpit. Or as the fathers explained, this is also his church. Um, and um, one um, Orthodox writer says, notice that also this boat is not the boat that is given to Peter to be piloted. Rather, it is the church, which is committed to the apostle to be governed. For this is the vessel that does not kill, but gives life to those born along the storms of this world as if by way. So he's saying, you know, how the Lord told Simon Peter, from now on you will catch men, right? So he's saying these fish, um, uh, just like it says, just as the little boat holds the dying fish that have never that have been brought up from the deep, so also the vessel of the church gives life to human beings who have been freed from turmoil. If we're in the, the tumultuous waves of the sea, and not understanding what our boat is or what our direction is or what our home is, then we need to be caught by the net to be lifted up out of the sea and into the ship. Um, <clears throat> and so um, this is the church who gives life to those who are half dead, um, as, as one uh, writer says. So the, the point of this journey on earth is to learn over and over what the apostles learned here, um, both like we said, the, the Simon Peters and the St. John's. Um, and when we do this um, in, the, in the proper way, God continually enlarges our heart and gives us more energy. So we become more of a better Martha and more of a better Mary at the same time. And this is the, this is the mystery because um, the little that we have when we give to the Lord in the proper way he blesses more and more, so we have more capacity to do and to love. Glory be to now and to the joy of Jesus. Blessed are the.